Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Infraspace. Always worrying when you have an autosave that's like a week later than the last actual save. What was I doing when I opened it last time? I don't remember. But I picked one of them and we're just waiting for the semi-late in it. <laughs> what are they? The late in it. Not semi-late, they're actually late. And then we're just updating roads. I have a lot of roads in my world, so we could be here a while. Okay, we could be here a really long time. Come on, come on. I didn't build that many roads. Did I? Oh yes, my mistake. We definitely have a lot of roads. Yeah, I forgot about all of these and all of these, but I didn't forget about that one. Anyway, anyway, here we are. We are in our lovely Engetopia planet thing. Uh, does it have a name? Is it just cool? The architects suck at this point. But yeah, pretty successful colony so far, I reckon. Although looking down here, we have finally hit the point where our population is the same as the housing and jobs are still slightly higher. So we need a few more houses, I think. But first, a massive thank you to Alex. VPN for sponsoring today's video. Now, as we know, the internet is full of people I like to describe as architects. They are people trying to steal your data, but you can use the link in my description to get protection for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee if it's not for you. With Atlas, you can do all the good stuff that a VPN offers you, like watching a series that isn't available in your country without using those dodgy websites. This means that you can watch the show without worrying about ads or malware, which thankfully Atlas VPN protects you from anyway. But where Atlas VPN really shines, is they offer the best VPN speed with over 750 optimized servers for reducing ping and lag. It's like upgrading your normal concrete roads and infraspace to the crazy fast highways for super speeds. It also allows you access to play games that may otherwise be available due to geo restrictions and no more having to buy games for expensive prices just due to your location. Atlas VPN also prevents your ISP from interfering with your connection whilst you play online games and it hides your IP so you're no longer at risk of DDoS attacks. It works with loads of your favorite platforms platforms like Windows, iOS, Android. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three-year subscription for $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Click the link in my description to get this incredible deal. So I think what I might do to start with, we'll just fill up all of these gaps. So a basic habitat, the price is 10 concrete. We have 9,000, so we won't even hesitate. We'll just shove a load of these in. And I'm very sorry, perfectionists. I can, <laughs> I can fit one there. But I can't fit any here because I did my grid so poorly. But they're all done. They're just taking their oxygen delivery and then they'll be ready for new residents. And they should upgrade pretty quickly, actually. So if we click on one of these new basic habitats to see who we know. Oh, God, who is that? Hello there. Where did you come from? What is that, Tash? Anyway, apparently we now have a bloke that tells us exactly what they need. Uh, they need oxygen. They need survival food. And they're going to upgrade very, very shortly. And as we know, these upgrade to different levels. We've got a level three one down there, the Crystal Maze, also known as a nice habitat. And then the majority of our residential areas are the Habitat 4s. These are residential buildings and we're currently working on upgrading these. So we need good meals, home robots and culture. I think we are delivering good meals and home robots now. So if we zoom out of there and head over this direction. Oh God, I forgot about what we built last time. <laughs> Oh, I was having one of those days, was I? I think we spunked all of our steel building this railway, which to be fair, does dodge all the wind turbines. I was worried about we'd clash with those with the railway. But yeah, if we follow this over here, we've got our cow food plant area. So this takes the prime ingredient of sulfur, turns that into various greens that are grown in these greenhouses, which then allow our saxophone inspired meat labs to produce meat, where finally a good meal can be made in our food factories. And then these are sent on the trains along this route. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. And then they should come out here. Why why have all the trains stopped? What's going on? Where's the start of the train? Now this is <laughs> Where are we going? I'm trying to find the front. Where's the first train? It's here. Ah, oh, look. Can anyone see the problem here? An architect designed this. It wasn't me last time. I subcontracted out this bit to an architecture firm. And look, they've forgotten about headroom. So we're going to use the move it tool thing. And can we can we lower this one? Yes, there you go. We've created headroom. What has happened over here? This, this train's ass is like crushed. So we might have to do similar in that. We might have to take that node raise it up can trains now move yes they can now move so we haven't delivered any good meals yet although i think this train look at it it's completely full so we could be feeding our colony with awesome meals we've just got to keep an eye out on any clashes and after a bit of fiddling the first trains have arrived uh they're, they're completely empty though so no meat yet <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, very soon we should have good meals going to these habitats. Excellent. And all the ones that I just built, look, they're all crystal mazes. And that one just upgraded to a, to a residential building. Okay, that is good. And if you're wondering, how do people arrive to this lovely colony? Well... <laughs> <laughs> they arrive via spaceport. So you can see the jets come flying in. People land. And then once they've collected their luggage and everything, they leave the spaceport and head towards the colony in the most luxurious mode of transport, which is the G-Wagon, 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 G-Wagon. <laughs> I've had so many calls to do a 10-hour G-Wagon video on YouTube. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, dear. I have too much fun. Oh, look at this. Look. So, jobs in the middle, 3,734. Population, 3,793. We've actually got more people than jobs for the first time ever in this series. Wow. wow. I'm impressed. Looking at these, though, they need some carbon, which means we need to build a few more oxygen processors. So, these hire three people, as you can see in the top right of that. And they turn nothing. They literally just exist to create oxygen and carbon. One every 16 seconds. So we'll plonk a few of these in here. Then we'll realize they're outside the electricity area. Damn it. So we'll plonk that there. And we just need to connect this with a power pole over to there. And now these have electricity, which means they're now producing oxygen and carbon. And oxygen will go over there. They will make sure our people can breathe. And the carbon should end up along this road into these incredible buildings. The nanotube factories, which allow us to then create the neural processor factories and as we know we struggled big time to get employees for those we had to make a huge advertising board with testimonials on there uh, thankfully it did the job we are making those now which means we should be researching something as you can see they are waiting on the neural processors they've got two being delivered they need four though to create a yellow science pack so again we are slacking but just to create four of these every 90 seconds as well it takes everything that's connected behind it all of those buildings all of those all of those all of those all of these around here so in order to make just another neural processor like one every 90 second to place another one of these buildings it's gonna need like a hundred jobs or something hence i was just letting research do its thing we're currently researching the super highways we're nearly there actually 77 out of 120 research and we got a load of things stacked up behind there as well so that's all good we were focusing on getting our residential buildings up another level so you can see the good meals are now being delivered so perhaps now it's time to work on the home robot and the culture so how is culture delivered in this world well apparently just like parks it's a stadium so we need a stadium within range of our residential areas we need them dotted around to satisfy that and allow them to upgrade now obviously the best spot would be in the middle that would mean losing a load of houses so we might just have to do a few around the outside now to start with i might get rid of these two spaceports they've been there from the start but they're sort of in the way we move this road down a little bit as well and then hopefully we can fit one in if we move this train line up a bit that's a good thing about this compared to real life in real life you can't just move train lines this easily <laughs> <laughs> if you're trying to build something in real life and the train line's in the way, you're basically cocked. But in this, we can literally just go boosh. And just like that, all these people, they have culture. Look, they're turning green. All right, where else can we put a stadium? I don't know how I'm going to get these ones. I could put one there. That covers like half of them. Perhaps I could get one down there or even up here. Yeah, okay. Let's delete some of these roads. Let's get a stadium in there. All right, so that's everyone covered apart from these people. I think to do this we're gonna have to do a little bit of tweaking i'm wondering if we can lift these roads over the top of it or maybe we could go down here maybe we could move all of these so what i'm thinking we extend the grid over to there and then we just move a load of these like well out the way up there all right if we then delete that road can we then fit a stadium there oh no they're so big <laughs> Why do they make stadiums so big? All right, what about like that? It's just a little bit too wide. Oh, that's nearly perfect. But nearly is not good enough. So after painstakingly moving all of these over very slightly, does a stadium now fit in there? If it doesn't, I'm going to be mad. Oh, it fits. It fits. We don't have enough steel, though. We need 300 steel. We've only got 146. Where's all of our steel? What did we spend it all on recently? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I stand by that decision. <laughs> 
Anyway, we'll just neaten all of these up. Then we can press play again without losing any oxygen. And then we just wait for some steel and we'll build the stadium. And then we're nearly there. Look, they've got good meals. They've got culture. They just need home robots. So how do we go about building home robots? Well, this here is a home robot factory. It needs two electronics, one red thing. Oh no, oh no. One blue thing and two silver snaily poo things. I think normal processors are the blue things yeah they are oh balls so basically we're gonna have to create loads of neural processors that's annoying that's gonna take a long time oh dear Matt. although question looking at all of these electronics factory they're all full up they've got enough iron ore they've got enough copper ore and they come from these two roads which are linked to these and yeah you can see all these mines the outgoing storage is full Ball, which means essentially we have too many mines for how many electronics factories we're making so i think we could double this up to eight pretty easily and basically what i'm thinking is we delete these roads we bring them all around the back and then we do a strip of electronics factories down here so if we delete these roads if we then delete these i want to i want to get this road straight it's annoying me it's on a bend and then we can build concrete road from like there all the way up to there use the faster roads to connect what we had back here going around the backs of these connecting in there you doing the same so they're all connected as they were we just fill in this whole strip with electronics factories realize we built it slightly too close to that road and get annoyed <laughs> Then we can just tweak this road out the way. No one will ever know. Do another strip of these. And just like that, we've more than doubled our electronics capacity. So when we press play, look at all the hover trucks leaving our mines. They're full of copper. They're full of sand. They're being joined by these ones, the ones from our iron mines. And then they're all being delivered to these where we should be making a lot of electronics. Next up, we need twice the amount of these microchip factories and these just take sand and electronics so essentially we're just going to fill up this gap with a load of those so we've done the road network we're just putting the buildings in and they're getting a nice efficiency bonus as well so two strips of those we're going to need some more power as you can see we're using 114 megawatts we're only producing 75 so let's just wang another solar plant over there lovely and then these guys are waiting on sand are we producing enough sand man there is a lot of sand queued up in here i think there's enough sand coming it just might take a while to get through there but oh no what happened here i think the mine itched the left nut too much the train track's been deleted good thing i spotted that there we go no wonder we were slacking on some things right so that's all of those sorted next up are these things what do they need again oh just carbon and sand so i think what we'll do we'll just do another strip of nanotubes along the back so identical to what we have basically so we'll come off there-ish go along to there in a straight line and then connect down to there so we need six large sand mines they can battle each other for the sand and then it's just the really cool nanotube factories look at the efficiency of those as well oh no they need loads of steel 200 steel each well that was a bit of an oversight how do i make more steel so these are our steel plants they need carbon why aren't they getting carbon they should get carbon via the train i think what happened where i cut that train line where that testicle was completely cut in half i think that paused all the trains but they've all gone back to the start now so they should all as soon as they've made it through this meat <laughs> Which is definitely efficient. I'm not getting rid of this maze. It took too long to build. I'm not getting rid of it. But I think once they get over along here to this station, then hopefully they'll fill up. So let's keep an eye on this train. Is it going to get full of carbon? No, it's completely, it's completely empty. All right, so I've just drawn in the district thing an arrow from this district to the steel one. And I think... Yeah, look at all that carbon leaving. It's all leaving now. Uh, it is actually ignoring the trains, though. It could use the trains. But for some reason, they just want to drive there themselves. Man, they have really gridlocked this place. I tell you what, actually, we've got the traffic light update. I forgot about that. So can we? If we click on this, can you see that button there? Traffic lights. We can put different phases in and all sorts. Oh man, this is going to be awesome. So we might want to go through and just traffic light all of these junctions up. Right, maybe it's worth doing that with these huge junctions. Like what is going on here? Like look at that. Is that clear to anyone? If we traffic like that, look, you can see all the different... Oh, this is so cool. So I think this one, phase four, we definitely want that to last the longest. And the way people actually do this in real life, they do literally like monitor. They have people like out with stopwatches and stuff. And essentially it's a double check that your computer modeling is right. Because essentially you don't want like traffic in one arm. 
arm. So this one, it's queuing up all the way down here. If it were to back up to here, then we know that the other arms are on for too long because there's too much traffic backing up. Now, likewise, you can see it sort of happened here. This, this is completely filled up. So what if we drop all of these to like five seconds each? So they should all move a bit quicker, which hopefully means, look, as the traffic stacks up here, it starts backing up. But then by the time it goes green, the traffic didn't back up up to this junction. That's how you want it set up. This could take a lot of tweaking. I don't know if I want to get that involved. <laughs> I, I do. I really, really do. But do you guys want to see that? Probably not. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, traffic modelers, a whole different breed of engineer. I didn't really dabble in any of that. I just took what they said and designed roads. But they sort of tell you like when you need to have two lanes, when you need three, like how many lanes want to go left and right and like all that sort of stuff it's, it's sort of a bit boring to be honest but uh, we take all the traffic modelers data and then we design a road to standard from it nice oh man look in the stadium we're in the stadium i feel like those middle screens are a little bit too low <laughs> like i don't know how big a person is in this world but i feel like they might be hitting the ball against that whatever game they play in that right so looking at this this arm here look at the traffic it's backed up all the way down here it's backing up that way so essentially we either need to put like an extra lane in or we can try and just what is it phase three what if we make that twice as long yeah so phase two the one coming out of there is 10 seconds long and what if we also say you can go into all three of those lanes because they're mainly trying to go left i think right not sure if i made this better or worse but <laughs> We have traffic lights now. Uh, quite looking forward to filling with those, actually. But nice, things seem to be running a little bit smoother. We fixed the steel production. Okay, so let's get back to building the nanotube factories. One, two, three. Well, that didn't last long. <laughs> I need more steel, man. Yeah, there's a lot of people struggling with the old computers. Is the reason for that just traffic? Let's go over to our computer area, which is over here. They're all sort of working at low capacity. They're only half full of people. I wonder if we go into this, the production overview menu. Yeah, we've actually reduced computer. Let's up that to the max. Now you can see all of these. They've all got four people in. They're all working at over 100% efficiency. All the purple hover trucks are flying. I've just noticed all all the purples they all come through the research area that's no good i tell you what we need we need a little slip road so if you come off there and go up there that's better all the purples are going that way now which is sort of a direct <coughs> smoke a direct route into here nice and you can see now there's hardly any computer chip warnings i think we're doing okay we've sort of solved that we can slowly build more nanotube factories very slowly and then once they're done we can build four more of these the neural processors add some more testimonials attract some more people and then perhaps we'll upgrade to level five although why do some of these people have no culture oh i haven't built the stadium yet <laughs> <laughs> at the very start i went to build a stadium there i never built it and what a surprise like an hour later into gameplay we're still waiting on steel hmm all right there we go stadium is in and everyone has a hundred culture now that's better so it's just the home robots we need to work on now i assume once we have this strip done of those with the neural processors there we just need the red things and the silver things i think the silver isn't that aluminium yep large aluminium mine creates aluminium so that's easy to do and the red things are these the motor factories Ooh, which also have like a wind instrument on the top that looks like a bit of a trumpet or something does anyone else see that like the top of a trumpet like that was definitely a trumpet noise yeah but these are all outgoing storage full as well so that should be very easy just to connect up to these to make that all work nice okay i'm pleased with myself i think i know what i'm doing the trouble is everything takes so long to do in this game now and like our colony is actually huge like look over there like in the background can you see that if we head over that direction that's san francisco it's insane We've put a lot of work into this place. A lot of work. I'm quite proud. But the worrying thing is just like how much more there is to do. Like look at the research tree. There's all of those to do. I think the more things you unlock, the longer it takes. Like if we come down into here, we've only got half of these unlocked. There's five more buildings. The VR Edutainment Factory. The Iridium Propellant Factory. The AI Control Unit Factory. There's so much to do in this game. I'm loving it. I am not loving that though. Habitat's downgrading. We're full of crystal mazes now. We're going to have to try and source out the computer chip situation. I think to be honest... I think it might be a traffic issue or maybe i do just need to build more of these i don't know i don't know do you know i don't think he knows all i do know is architects suck bye guys peace love and architects suck Ink.